Hampton Roads is the name of an expensive channel comprised of a handful of rivers in the Virginia Beach area that connects the Chesapeake Bay with the Atlantic Ocean. The surrounding area, which is commonly referred to as the world's greatest natural harbor, is home to nine different cities that vary in size. But as a whole, the region is home to about 1.7 million people. The bulk of the region's economy is supported by that harbor and the businesses that leverage it. Hampton Roads is home to a plethora of homegrown companies that specialize in ship repair, naval installations, and freight, having been staples of area industry for hundreds of years. There is, however, one other export that Hampton Roads and its block of cities that is amicably referred to as the 757 has become famous for, one that is slightly more exciting to talk about than the sea freight and supply chain and has provided countless hours of entertainment for all of us. This export I'm talking about is Hampton Roads' absolutely insane pipeline of NFL talent, which the area has steadily been gaining recognition for since the late 90s, as more and more local talent made it through the college ranks to the pros. And we are not just talking about run-of-the-mill and the roster type of guys, but elite NFL talent at nearly every position. Guys like Michael Vick, who revolutionized the quarterback position, and Bruce Smith, the 11-time Pro Bowler and two-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, and did I mention that he is the NFL's all-time sack leader? Dwight Stevenson, a five-time All-Pro center in the 80s. Dre Bly, the All-Pro defensive back that was a much-needed safety net for the early 2000s Super Bowl winning St. Louis Rams team. The list goes on and on, and it isn't just a breeding ground for NFL players either. Hampton Roads for decades now has been a seemingly never-ending pipeline of top-tier athletes in a wide array of sports. Athletes like gymnast and Olympic gold medalist Gabby Douglas and Purnell Sweet P. Whitaker, the Hall of Fame boxer. How about Alonzo Mourning, a Hall of Fame center who dominated opposing bigs for the Miami Heat? Speaking of the Georgetown product, ever heard of a little-known former Hoya who went on to have a cup of coffee in the NBA? Allen Iverson. There is so much talent that comes out of the area that it is hard to even wrap your mind around. I mean, come on, even Major League Baseball's Hampton Roads representatives and four-time All-Star Justin Upton and his brother BJ. The Upton brothers are not the only Hampton Roads talent to succeed in professional baseball either. We're talking All-Stars too, like longtime New York Mets standout David Wright and Michael C. Cuddier, the former batting champion who played his best ball for the Minnesota Twins. Okay, okay, you get the point. Besides, even with the wide array of talent that Hampton Roads has to offer, there's no denying that football and football alone is the soul of the area. For many Hampton Roads area residents, football is simply a way of life. So much so that it even surprised area legend Michael Vick once he made it to the NFL back in 2001. Obviously, Vick knew a couple of the other players in his age group that had made it to the league, but he was shocked when all of a sudden it felt like he couldn't go more than a few plays without bumping into a Hampton Roads product. It wasn't until I got into the pros when I realized, yo, it's a lot of guys from the National Football League that's from this area, Vic told the undefeated. It was just a ton of guys that was just making it. This was something that became even more abundantly clear to Vic once he returned to the NFL action in 2009 after missing two consecutive seasons serving both a suspension and prison sentence that stemmed from his involvement in an illegal dogfighting ring. There was plenty to catch up on around the NFL after two years out of the league. The game was changing, now quarterbacks were protected more than ever and Vic, who had very few contemporaries when he started out in the league, was no longer the only dual threat QB on the block. And of course, there was a whole new crop of talent from Hampton Roads now making a name for themselves at the NFL level. Like former NFL Patriots linebacker Jared Mayo, who had been taken out of the University of Tennessee while Vic was behind bars. Mayo, like many of the other athletes out of Hampton Roads, showed signs early that there was something different about him. Sure, he stood out as a special athlete, even amongst a crop of guys that each seemed to be more explosive and more athletic than the next. After all, Mayo stood about six feet and two inches tall and carried a burly 240-pound frame during his playing days, giving him the strength to bring down even the most powerful running backs. Between his elite frame and his dynamic speed and quickness, it was no wonder that during his first year in the league, Mayo was the only rookie starter on a Bill Belichick run defense. I mean, the guy ran a 4.56 40-yard dash. As a linebacker, sure, he had some catching up to do if he wanted to compete with Michael Vick's epic 4.33, which by the way is rumored to have been nearly a full tenth of a second slower than his personal best. Point is, Mayo was an absolute beast. Anyway, it didn't take long in training camp for him to show that he was a force to be reckoned with, and he all but ran away with the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year honors. Just like Michael Vick, who week in and week out displayed a physical skill set 
unlike anything we had ever seen before at his position. Jared Mayo was doing things that rookie middle linebackers simply don't do. Mayo's football IQ and dynamic skill set completely opened up the playbook for Belichick, and there were countless schemes, protections, and packages that they could only do with a player like Mayo on the field. Not only because of how much ground he could cover, but his continued self-development that stemmed from his deep love and excitement for the game. It pushed him year in and year out to work tirelessly, something you need in Hampton Rose. You can have all the natural talent in the world, but it takes a special breed of worker to stand down there. Check out how Bill Belichick was gushing about Mayo's modesty and professionalism, the intangibles that made him so effective immediately upon entering the NFL. Mayo had been a top 10 pick who didn't act like one. On draft day, when the best of the best are invited to New York, often wearing made-for-occasion tailored suits, Mayo had been home in Virginia with his family raking leaves. He was a worker there and a worker in Foxborough. In the offseason, he'd come to the stadium and watch film, even when there were no coaches to be found. He loved the game, and it could be seen by the way he played middle linebacker, never turning down the opportunity to plug a hole or run a sideline to sideline. Belichick might have been caught a little off guard by such dedication, but it was just par for the course for Mayo. If you wanted to stand down, if you wanted to be different, if you wanted to make it, it took everything you had down in Hampton Roads. The talent pool was so deep and created such a steady flow of elite athletes that even on the area high school teams, if you weren't carrying your weight, it was on to the next guy, no questions asked. This is a sentiment that Pittsburgh Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin, who grew up in Hampton Roads and went on to play college ball at the local university, William & Mary, believes wholeheartedly. The Super Bowl winning coach detailed the it factor, the intense internal competition amongst Hampton Roads athletes gives them to the undefeated explaining, that's why the people from here play the way they play. There's a great deal of confidence in being from this place because you know that you've been challenged, you understand competition. Michael Vick lived this competition firsthand as there was one name which may not be as familiar to you as Vick's who was just one year older and almost unanimously listed higher on every college football recruiting list. A guy that he credited with always pushing his game because of the pressure he felt competing against him. His name was Ronald Curry. If you ask anyone from the Rhodes area, he is widely regarded as the best high school athlete in the state's history. Don't take it from me though, listen to what Vic himself had to say about Curry. Ronald Curry was the best high school football player in the history of high school sports and I'm talking about all across the country. There was nobody better than Ronald Curry and I'll take that to the grave. Ah oh, well, he might have a point. Curry quarterbacked Hampton High School to three consecutive state titles in football from 95 to 97 and won in basketball in 98, while breaking a slew of state high school records along the way. He could go on to play both football and basketball at the University of North Carolina, which did cause some turmoil in his own state, as most Virginians were pining for him to take his talents to an in-state institution. Nevertheless, he had a prolific career at UNC, excelling in both sports, despite a myriad of coaching changes within the football program. Although Curry didn't go back until the seventh round of the 2002 NFL Draft and eventually ended up transitioning from quarterback to wide receiver, he quickly adjusted and proved a more than capable contributor in a career that was unfortunately marred by injuries. While the intense competitive culture pushed Hampton Roads athletes like Michael Vick and Jared Mayo to get as far as they did, growing up in that part of Virginia is not all fun and games. Far from it, actually. Much of the Hampton Roads area is filled with low-income housing and crime-ridden streets subsequently creating a rather dangerous upbringing for many of these now professional athletes. Norfolk, where David Wright grew up, and Newport News, which was home to Michael and Marcus Vick, were listed among the top 30 murder capitals in the United States back in 2016. So needless to say that they came from very humble roots, especially compared to the posh lifestyle that being a professional athlete nowadays offers. Despite the obvious drawbacks to growing up in such a troubled area, the athletes that come from Hampton Roads wear it like a badge of honor. Michael Vick actually credits his upbringing as a factor in his development, both as an athlete and as a man, he explained to the undefeated. Here's how he put it. This place just made us hard as a rock, Vick said. We go through so much, so many trials and tribulations, difficult times growing up in the hood. It makes you a different person, a different player. Vick is not the only figure in professional football to acknowledge the edge that comes from growing up in Hampton Roads. Tomlin went as far as saying that there is a palpable feeling that you get when you are raised there, saying, I've known there was a talent here all my life. I can't explain it. I don't know why that's the case, but it's something that I've always been aware of. I think anybody that's from here is aware of that. And well, it is hard to argue with the results. D'Angelo Hall, Plaxico Burris, Camp Chancellor.
It's insane to think that so many ridiculous athletes came from this one little pocket of Virginia. Don't expect it to slow down anytime soon either. It isn't a question of whether or not we see more Hampton Roads prodigies in the NFL, but rather who and how will they continue to reshape the game and further the legacy of the 757? Which area of the United States do you think produces the best NFL talent? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, now's a great time to hit that subscribe button down there as well. If you like the video, then like the video, we'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, tune in to TPS every single day for more cool videos. We'll see you next time.